Welcome back to The Brantley Method and another episode of Film Study. In episode three, I sat down with Josiah Harris. The four-star, six-foot-seven small forward from Richmond Heights High School in Ohio discussed with me his recruitment, on-the-court development, and academic focus. The most intriguing thing about Josiah on the court is his versatility and ability to exploit matchups. If you put a big on him because of his size, he has the ability to put the ball on the floor and blow by them. If you put a smaller wing on him because of his speed and explosiveness, he has the ability to shoot right over the top of them. Josiah Harris is a three-level scorer, and when you couple that with his leadership, maturity, and intellect, you have the definition of a can't-miss prospect. I hope you enjoyed this interview as much as I enjoyed getting to know Josiah beyond the ranking, offers, and on-the-court abilities. How you doing? What's going on, Josiah? How you been, man? Good. Man, good. Good to catch up with you. Good. I was looking forward to seeing you this uh, th this summer, but you know, I understand it's a little bit of a different time, and everybody trying to stay safe and healthy and and out the way, as I say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How have you been? How's how's everything been? Now that you guys have been back to school and back training and everything. Good. Just getting back and getting acclimated with the school and everything, with it being online. Just making sure I'm just putting my time aside for the right classes and everything. Just getting right with that. And working out with the school team is great. Got a lot of talent just gelling together. All right. So, Josiah, first things first. Um, class of 22, small forward. Talk to me a little bit about this journey for you uh, from – really loving, fall in love with the game of basketball. So let's start there. When did you know that this was what you were passionate about and you wanted to play at the next level? Uh, probably about fourth grade. I started, my first love was baseball. So up until like first to fourth grade, I played baseball, first baseman. But then I started playing with all the high red in the fourth grade and I loved it. I just loved the AAU atmosphere and it was, it was just an amazing feeling. So I stuck with basketball. So first base, um, so so you must be a power, a little bit of a power hitter, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> Do you still play baseball or just all basketball now? All basketball. Okay, okay. All right. So about fourth grade or so, you you fell in love with the game of basketball and decided, hey, I want to take this really serious. Um, and you know now, I mean, look at where you're at now. You know the the games evolve, your games evolve. I've watched. Film. I've watched highlights over the last couple of years. Uh, talk to me a little bit about the the work that you've put in, uh, both on and off the court, over the last couple of years to really get to where you're at right now. I'm just been putting in a lot of work. My parents motivate me a lot, just telling me like I got to, all this other distractions, social media, and everything. That's that's all good in there, but we got to work and put in work with nobody seeing, and that's going to make you do great when everybody's watching. So I just always use that as motivation to keep working and just staying ready so you don't have to get ready, just always being prepared. And uh, going to Richmond was an amazing, amazing uh, thing for me because they got my body together and it started, like we did workouts I haven't done before. So <laughs> yeah, they, it's an amazing coaching staff there and just like the atmosphere that got my body together more in shape and stronger. So yeah. For sure, for sure. So immediately one of the things that kind of stuck out stood out to me about you um i've heard the the baby mellow nickname so talk to me where did that come from where did the comparison to carmelo come in talk to me a little bit about that um just my versatility i feel like i'm very versatile in my game and we can uh like they compare us and just how versatile i can face up uh take bigger guys off the dribble uh, shoot over small defenders and my shot. Uh, I feel like my shot's a very big piece of my game. So I feel like they, they compare us because of that, just the versatility. Okay, yeah, and, and you'll also play above the rim and put somebody in the basket if they, if they choose to jump, huh? Yes. <laughs> All right, so um, versatility within your game, what are the th main things that you've done to stay in shape and stay ready to go you know, during COVID, uh, during the time out of the gym? What has been your main focus as far as y your personal growth and development? I'm going to the track with my dad, running miles every day, just keeping my cardio together. Uh, my dad, he, uh, 
he bought in a, a weight set. So we started like lifting weights downstairs to keep like the strength and just praying a lot, just praying that this thing will get the COVID will get over and we can get back in the gym. A lot of praying because this is some hard times with Corona and everything. Sophomore AAU season pretty much was, not, it wasn't the same. I right. mean, crazy. So you, you mentioned, you know, just how different it's been. Um, and, and, you know, that's something that across the country, everybody's had to experience it and see it differently. Um, talk to me a little bit about, you, you said prayer helped you and it helped you to, to kind of stay focused, to, um, to not focus on the negative side. Um, now that you're back in the gym, now that you're back training, what are some of the goals that you've set for this season, goals that you have for yourself? Goals? Uh just being more of a vocal leader. Uh, I like leading by example, but just being able to talk, just being more of a vocal leader, telling people when they're wrong and just stepping up more like that in that type of way, uh, getting players involved, and just like gelling the team together, being a good leader, bringing like huddles, everything, just being more vocal out there. Absolutely. And, and to win, of course, win a lot, win states. <laughs> winning states so that's the the team goal is to win states um you know you understand it's going to take leadership on your part so that's awesome to hear that you know you have the maturity to see that hey it's not just about scoring it's not just about playmaking but you have to be a leader as well um so so that's awesome to hear let's talk a little bit about the recruiting process so um obviously you're you've picked up you know quite a few offers here lately uh cincinnati georgia tech virginia tech Xavier, Wichita State, Ohio State, Texas A&M, Kansas, SMU, West Virginia, Cleveland State, Kent State, Akron. Am I missing any? Um, did you say Virginia Tech? Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, you pretty much got it, yeah. Yeah, so, so without a doubt, people are seeing what you're capable of doing. College coaches are starting to identify that. The recruitment's happening. Uh, talk to me a little bit about, uh, I guess, let's, let's make that a twofold question. So, um, obviously, a lot of your recruitment happened over the summer, over this, this summer, um, and, and we didn't have the AAU season. So, talk to me a little bit about how important it was, you know, your, your coaches at Richmond Heights being able to help navigate you through that process. Um, um, you know, your workouts in the gym. How important was all of that to, you know, accelerate the recruitment for you? Um, it was big. Thank God that the coaches had film and they got them to get out to the coaches and everything so they could see what I did. And by me not playing my sophomore season, I played a big key, just sending out tape, getting in the gym, uh, filming me working out and everything, showing I can do. So that played a big part with uh, film and everything. Uh, some of the coaches, they seen me and they said they were going to wait a little longer, but due to Corona, they they jumped on and they offered. But yeah, film has been pretty big. And and obviously the recruiting landscape has been a little bit different. You've been doing a lot of zooms. Yes, yes, sir. All right, talk to me a little bit about what that's been like getting to know these coaches virtually versus you know them sitting down and 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 you you know meeting them whether it be at the gym at the school whether it be on their campus. Talk to me a little bit about how those Zoom meetings have been going. Um, they've been going well. They show me like the campus and everything, uh, how like how I fit in their system. They show me like the plays they run, like the type of tempo they have, and yeah, I really liked it. What are you looking for in a school? So not necessarily level or, or, you know, conference or anything like that, but what, you know, what is it that you're looking for in a school? How will you know or, you know, what is the um, kind of the definition of finding the right fit for you? Uh, right now it's just building that relationship with the coaches and just being somewhere I can make an impact. I just want to make an impact early uh, and just building that relationship right now, seeing like talking to the coaches and just, Keep on building on that. Have you thought about what you might want to study? Um, something to do with business, business for sure. Okay, so talk to me about that. What, what's made you interested in business? Where does that come from? Uh, my dad, he's done a lot of business. Uh, right now I'm taking college classes and I'm in a business class and I like that, everything to do with stocks and everything. I bought some stocks earlier and now uh, 
they're getting big. So I like doing stuff with stocks and everything. So awesome, awesome. So let's 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 go a little bit deeper into that. Let's talk a little bit about the academic side because um, I think that's very important. That's an important piece of not only any student athlete, but that's an important piece of who you are. Um, I've heard you know in, in doing my research and talking about you, I've heard that you know you're a, a high academic student. I've heard that you're taking college course already, which you confirmed. I mean, you're going into your junior year, you're already taking college courses. So talk to me a little bit about your academic side. Um, talk to me about you know where you stand there, you know GPA and stuff like that. And then talk to me about some of the goals that you set for yourself academically. Uh, um, I've been taking CCP classes. That's college classes ever since my sophomore year. Um, I'm on track to at the end of this year have my associate's degree. So. I'm really motivated and making sure I'm staying in my books so I can get that accomplished. That's a really big goal of mine. Uh, I have a 4.4 GPA. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm going to work on getting my bachelor's after my associate's, so just keep on going. Nice, nice. So 4.4 GPA, you'll have your associate's at the end of your junior year. Um, if you do this right, and, and you know, this is, I'm, I'm so glad to hear all this from you because this is a conversation that I have with young men all the time that if you attack this the right way, you can make the system work for you. Um, to be able to graduate high school, go off to college, play the game you love, earn a potentially a bachelor's and a master's, you know, in that four years of playing, you know, and then be able to continue on and take the game as far as it can possibly take you. But taking advantage of the time that you have, uh, it's a blessing to hear that your head's on straight. Clearly, uh, there's some great motivation and some great direction from your parents. So uh, make sure you let them know that I said they did a phenomenal job there with, with the leadership and, and the guidance of you. Um, but, you know, when you, when you talk about having a four point for and taking college courses and, and all the goals that you've set for yourself. Um, being a, a young man, being a, a kid still, um, how do you stay focused? How do you, you know, balance the basketball, you know, the social time, video games, whatever the case may be? How have you maintained that discipline to stay on top of your academics? Knowing that none of this stuff right now, it really doesn't all. It really doesn't matter. Everybody partying and doing all that stuff. Right now is the time you need to be focusing on your school and basketball because my parents said to put the hard work in now so it gets easier later. So I'm going to put my hard work in right now so it gets very easy for me later down the line. And I, I wouldn't want to be partying right now and make it harder. Man, I'm, I'm going to give my son your number. He's a freshman. He needs to hear it from somebody other than me. <laughs> You know, I mean, that's it's not often that you hear guys, especially, you know, with the level of, of, of talent and ability that you have, um, have that mindset and that focus. So there's definitely a maturity here beyond your years. Um, that's great to see. Um, it, it's no, you know, every time I have a conversation with somebody that's coached you or that knows you, they talk about how special you are, uh, both on and off the court. So I, I'm hearing amazing things. Uh, you definitely have, have made a fan in me. Uh, let me ask you, you know, I want to end with this. When, when it's all said and done, uh, when you're done playing, when your playing career is over, when you've, you've started on your business endeavors, because that's something that you have a passion for, what do you want the legacy uh, of Josiah Harris to look like? What do you want people to say when they mention your name, whether it be basketball related, whether it be off the court, you know, what do you want that legacy to look like? I wanted to be known as someone who was not just great on the court, but off the court, was a great role model. Um, just giving people knowledge, younger kids, uh, hopefully give back to the community in many ways. Um, I want to be known as a God-fearing man because I put God first. And uh, that's pretty much it. Just someone who took care of his family and just gives back to the community as a great role model. That's awesome. That's amazing, man. I listen. I I'm I'm impressed. Um, it, it's it's great hearing from you. It's great hearing these things from you. Um, like I said, I'm gonna be cheering for your success because you are the definition and the example uh, of what you know. I tell my son, I want him to be right. I want my son to understand the not not just the obviously we're athletes and we love the game, but the importance of the academic side, the importance of of character, um, the importance of being a leader the importance
importance of giving back to the community. Um, all, all the things that I'm hearing from you are so amazing. So I'm definitely cheering for your success. Um, you, now you have my number, you have my contact information. Anything you need from me, man, I always got you. Uh, you know, Coach Q told me you were special, but now I'm hearing it from myself. So it's, it's awesome to hear. Thank you.